Hello everyone, welcome to CyberScoop TV. Greg Otto, your managing editor here. We're coming to you from the floor of the 2018 RSA conference. And I'm talking with Sergio Caltagirone, the director of threat intelligence for Dragos. Sergio, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Greg. So, your company has been doing a lot of work around actors in the ICS space. Kind of talk to me about what you've been seeing in terms of crash override and Trisis and all the other actors that you've been working to apprehend, not apprehend, but give information I wish. to. Right. Probably not going to happen today. Um, so yeah, we were, 2017 was probably the biggest year for industrial control threats. Um, and of course we saw the, uh, the crash override malware, which was the first um, grid, electric grid impacting malware that uh, anyone's ever found. Um, that affected the Ukraine in 2016, um, and then we found it earlier in that uh, later, later in the winter. So obviously that was a, a big deal because before then it had been theorized that actors could affect electric power grids. Um, but before then it was always a well they might have to do it manually or you know more you know even more kinetic attacks. Um, and so then it was like it became real. Uh, and then after that, Trisis came up. So Trisis, I would say, is if, if, if there's any one thing that people need to know about is that when we engineer industrial control systems, we generally engineer, in, engineer them not just to operate, but to be safely operated. And that right. term is very important. Um, safety means that the environment and people won't be harmed, people won't die. So in most cybersecurity cases that we see, even talk, you know, here at RSA, people talking about ICS threats, most people don't realize that the huge number of safety features and safety systems that are involved in these systems, and even if you did attack them, um, it's more likely that the safety system would be able to catch it and try to prevent something really bad from happening. Well, unfortunately, um, you know, theorized way back in 2010, 2011, 2012, the idea of like, well, could somebody attack a safety system and how would all that happen? Um, and it was kind of just stuck out there as like an idea, and, and then it kind of just honestly took us all by surprise okay. that there was an adversary out there who was actively undermining safety systems, which means that you know if they were to undermine the safety system, prevent it from operating, and then maybe do something on the operation side, cause a plant to overpressurize, um, gauges to not properly monitor, things of that nature, you could have a, a significant event. Um, where you could see loss of life or, or harm to the environment. So let's talk about that operational aspect, because a lot of the conversations that I do hear when we're talking about ICS, it's IT versus OT. Correct. So kind of talk to me about that concept and what is changing and, and uh, how these critical infrastructure companies are yeah. adapting to that mindset in order to protect their systems. Absolutely. So um, IT, OT is a, um, it, it, was, it used to be a, uh, almost a religious mantra, okay. um, you know, where the IT side had their systems, their methods, their operations, their processes, um, and they were generally run by IT uh, folks. And then you had the OT side, and that would be operational technology, and, and that was going to be run and operated by engineers. Uh, who were responsible legally and ethically for the safe operation of physical processes. Um, and the reason that they separated was be, uh, traditionally was again because on the IT side you don't see the legal and ethical risks um, of IT systems going down where on the OT side people will go to jail, people could die if bad things happen. So very traditionally the engineers tried to keep a very strong hold on managing the OT side for that very simple reason. Um, Unfortunately, though, in modern business, you cannot keep those two things separated because right. business happens on the IT side, right. operations happens on the OT side. So, for instance, um, when you're producing power, the mo you know how much power you're generating, how much power somebody's using, it obviously has to get billed. So that information is going to flow naturally to the IT side to support billing and customer right. service and those things. So you're going to have these interconnections, and what we're seeing is the IT side needing greater visibility to the OT side. Um, and the OT side recognizing that they need to gain additional efficiencies from the IT side. Of course, you know, honestly, from a threat perspective, I think it was it was always a misnomer to think that these two things were separated because the uh, the adversaries don't necessarily separate the two. Okay. And so, if your security teams are not working cohesively across these two environments, you're probably going to have a bad day. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, talk to me a little bit about you know. Where do you see things going in this? Because this has been in the news now yeah. for a year, year and a half that these attacks have been happening. So do you think that 
critical infrastructure companies that are powering the water and powering the energy grid are getting up the course is what they need to do to in order to make sure that they're not the next crisis, or are the attackers just becoming so nimble that this is going to become a bigger and bigger problem? Yeah, so this is already a big problem. Um, we, we, we've gone past the point of getting ready for it because it's already here, clearly. And, and I don't say that to, to, to emphasize FUD, but clearly because right. we have the evidence in, right. sitting in front right. of us. Um, and so I think that the, the challenge we have is that um, when we talk about uh, critical infrastructure and industrial companies, you know, it's huge. We're talking millions of companies worldwide that are involved in this space, advanced manufacturing, oil and gas, upstream natural gas, downstream natural gas, oil refineries, electric generation, transmission, distribution, right. and so forth, right? Um, and you know, inside the U.S., you have literally thousands of individual independent utilities operating. Right. So how do you secure them all? The answer is we can't. Um, and, and one of the challenges that we're facing is that what we're watching the adversaries do is utilize the regional smaller utilities as test beds, as, op as operational proving grounds, effectively, to build their capacity in order to go against their primary targets. That's going to be really hard because the smaller utilities, a lot of them are going to be municipal. They're right. not going to have the funding to support a massive security operation. Um, they're going to be very low in the, um, in the maturity life cycle. And, and so the challenge for us is, well, how do we bring all of this up? Because obviously a water plant um, going down in a municipality is just as bad as a major power plant going right. out. So I think the challenge is going to be a, at a national policy level of what priority do we make this and, and what do we make this to happen? And as much as I hate to say it, um, this is going <laughs> to, it's weird because I'm usually the one that hates saying this, but it's going to take a massive influx of capital to get anybody to do anything at scale okay. if you want to secure the entire critical infrastructure. Okay. And I'm sure that as that scale ramps up, you'll be right there helping people out. As, I hope so. <laughs> all right. Sergio, thanks for joining us today. Really Thank appreciate Thank you very it. much, Greg. Appreciate it. For all of our videos, check out our YouTube channel. And for more on ICS and all things cybersecurity, check out cyberscoop.com. I'm Greg Otto. Thanks for watching.